Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Ultimate General American Revolution. The game has finally released in early access on Steam and I am super excited to go ahead and bring you guys a brand new playthrough. In this early access status of the build on Steam, you have access to the entirety of the US campaigns. That's all land battles, naval battles, all the story events, everything along them lines you can mess around with. We also have a skirmish battle and custom battle where you can play as a whole wealth of different things whether it's British or the Americans I'm hoping they're gonna add the French and the Spanish in that because in the newer patches which you guys will be able to play if you get the Steam version of it right now is you'll be you actually get supported and you can actually like use the French and the Spanish armies to help you in the wars which is again really cool I love how that's implemented there's now like deployment zones in certain battles which again is great tons of reworks to manufacturing and how the building system works and overall the game has just come a long long way however kind of almost ignore the past like six seven months of development as if it was early access because that wasn't the early access that was kind of like a closed beta period and now we're kind of getting into more about early access kind of so kind of just kind of approach this as if it's just released and this is kind of currently what you're getting they have also mentioned on top of that that the british campaign is obviously in the works it's going to be the main focus kind of going forward along with fixing all the current kind of performance issues and all the crashes and other things that you'll be getting later on in the American campaign that are currently there. Now that so many more people are getting their hands on the game, their issues are becoming a bit more prevalent, which is great because it means that they can be fixed. And of course, the British campaign is going to be dramatically different because instead of just building soldiers and using loyalty to get more regiments up and running, you're going to be shipping them across from the British Isles and from, you know, from Europe over to the continentals and you're going to be reinforcing. It's going to be a whole different way of playing. So I'm excited to see how that campaign does develop and hopefully we get to play in early access at some point. I will mention, however, the game is currently sitting at about 68% positive reviews on Steam. So it's currently mixed. I think it's about to go into positive in 2% more. And I think it will definitely trend upwards. The main kind of problem a lot of people are having with the game at the moment is the price. And I would say I will I totally agree with them. I think for what you get right now in the game, it probably isn't worth the 70, uh, 37 pounds or 42 pounds when the 10% offer does run out. Um, and that's like, what $45 I think it is a bit too expensive if the game was sitting at about I don't know like 30 pounds I would say that is a definitely a reasonable price and I would recommend you guys getting it but again at 37 right now 42 when it when the alpha goes I think it is just a bit too expensive and I really hope the developer does kind of realize this and then does reduce it because this is being published by game labs but I believe it's being made and then uh, by like one guy and then there's a bunch of other contractors helping him out with it but this is a very small team project and I think for this price, it's just too expensive. When the game fully releases, yes, stick the price up sure 42 even then, I don't know. But yeah, I think early access for game, yeah, they're just asking way too much. And I think it's going to turn a lot of people off or make people a bit salty for what they get to play currently in early access. So yeah, I thought I would just mention that because I know a lot of people are like umming and ahhing about the game. And yeah, I, I don't know, unless this game really does appeal to you. And if this is a great game and it's going to get better and better. But as I mentioned, I think for what the current price is, it's maybe just a little bit too expensive. However, uh, the developers have been kind of kind enough to gift me some keys so i'm going to be putting two keys in the next 24 hours down below in the comments so again kind of refresh the video come back to it now and again and see if you can snipe yourself a key i'm going to be doing it randomly over the next 24 hours so keep an eye down there in the comments and then please let me know if you've gone ahead and redeemed it or you've tried to redeem it and it's already been done so that other people don't have to make the same mistake and kind of you know kind of just refresh the video when the keys have already been taken but yeah let's dive into it i'm really excited to dive into the brand new campaign the game has come a long way since i've lost on a proper campaign playthrough so we're gonna dive in we're gonna check it out and we're gonna hopefully have some really good fun again i've played this game quite a bit so i have a really good idea and i'll try and explain everything as well with the mechanics as we go through so if you're struggling with the game hopefully i'll be able to kind of add a little bit of uh tactics and strategy behind my playthrough which will help your playthrough so let's start our story of course we were born we're going to be playing the u.s campaign and hopefully leading the continental army into victory child. right here we get to choose our name i'm just gonna go with george washington you know i think george washington will be a great leader of the american Continental Army. For my younger brothers and sisters. 
So here we get to pick some stats. And again, I, I never really found that these stats mattered too much, honestly. Um, there are a few good decisions in this tree a little bit later on. But again, I've never really found that like these actually matter too much. And this is something I hope that they do improve upon and make a little bit more important. Uh, but yeah, I find that you kind of max out a lot of your stats very early on and they don't dramatically improve anything. So it's kind of just like whatever. Again, same with like speed and commander aura. Like again, I feel like commander aura is really important important because uh, the the more soldiers you have in your bubble means the better you're going to be at keeping your soldiers from running because you get a morale buff so that's generally what i go but again i never really found that it does like make a big big difference Right here again, we get some negatives as well. I'm going to go with anything that isn't endurance. Like endurance is seemingly a decent stat. Um, again, we're going to try and make sure that we, we keep that as high as possible because that's going to affect our, our how tired our soldiers get and stuff. Tensions over control of the Ohio River Valley eventually sparked the French and Indian War. I was able to apply my skilled management to help prepare my troops. So this is also going to be something that's going to be quite interesting in the game as well, is because now that I mean, there's Native Americans, there's French and there's Spanish on the campaign map as you progress through. So they're all going to be playing a big, big, uh, big part in the campaign and getting them on side to harass the British is going to be imperative uh, for sure. So we're going to go probably again. These are all pretty interesting because now you can actually have a pretty decent standing army. Previously, you'd really have to rely on militia but since they've changed specialists you can really kind of go with just having a good firing force i'm going to stick probably with stamina keeping my men as healthy as possible is going to be really important um and just maybe meaning that they can fight is going to be yeah a very very kind of useful tool secure a commission in the army were thwarted by english officers with little respect for my abilities so i decided to resign my next steps were so right here, this is always pretty interesting. Again, like now this having this extra tension with natives being much lower from the start of the game is actually going to be really useful because you can hire Native American um, mercenaries and then you don't have to worry about them taking up your like population or anything. Could be really useful. I still think though that 10 grand is going to be just too valuable to give up. It's going to be so, so useful. You're going to be able to just do so much with it by guns, by artillery. Uh, yeah, it's always going to be so useful. Congress in Philadelphia. There I helped secure. And right here, again, they've actually changed this up pretty dramatically as well. Uh, one infantry unit is great. That's basically a proper unit of infantry, a proper not militia. This is actually like a, a proper fusilier unit, which is great. And then here you get actually some really good guns as well. You get brown besses. Or you could also go down the naval route as well. And I think in this playthrough, we're going to kind of neglect the naval stuff to begin with. I really want to hit the ground running because in this playthrough, I want to try my best to take Boston early. Generally, you don't want to do that because it triggers a bunch of invasions and the British try and reclaim everything. But I think if we can take it and we can start getting tax from it, it's going to be really worth it. So because of that, I think I'm going to go with the Brown Besses. Am I? Or the infantry? Brown Besses or infantry? Brown Besses. I think I'm going to go with the Brown Besses. We, we can basically outfit one unit with them. Oh, but no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to go with Brown Besses. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go with the Brown Besses. In the near future... A confrontation will break out, and I will have to use all my experience to fight for the independence of the colonies. Oh yeah, of course. So we're going to be playing on the hard difficulty. I think this is a pretty good... I think I recommend definitely on your first playthrough, play on normal. That's going to be a good start, and it's going to be like a perfectly kind of thing. If if, if game gets... If it, you kind of you fail your first attempt, you can even limit the AI reinforcements so there's less invasions. Or just play on easy. There is no shame on that. This is not an, an easy game. This is going to be a back and forth on your first playthrough. You're going to probably learn a lot of lessons. I definitely have, even playing on hard. Ultimate is a, probably a bit too difficult for me me um and not as fun to watch because you have to kind of game the game a little bit just to kind of dominate the map whereas i think it's hard there's no negatives there's no bonuses uh, you're just playing you're having fun and uh, we're gonna dive in i'm interested yeah i'm not sure if taking the the brown besses is gonna be the best play i think i'm gonna save them for a big push on boston so i'm gonna save them 
a uh, thousand brown besses for when we make our big push and we have a big battle i'll outfit everybody with good guns and then we'll go 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 so here we are on the initial campaign map and you may be thinking this is pretty small well the campaign does dramatically increase in size as you progress through the time kind of representing the the colony slowly turning and the support slowly turning after i think about two years in game you get the entire map it opens up first to the the west and you have more parts of like northern new york and the other parts up into canada and then it opens up to entirety of canada and then after that you get more of new york and then you kind of just go south and you get the entire west coast all the way down to florida the spanish the french become a lot more involved in the campaign as well so there's plenty of stuff to really kind of mess around with and have some fun so what we're going to do is of course we're going to go and take our first couple units and we are going to probably take up the endurance i feel like endurance is just the key stat some people tell me it's other things some people tell me it's not good i don't know what to really believe and we're gonna make a beeline for providence and newport because the sooner we get them unlocked the better so yeah this is ideally what you want to try and do is you want to bring your soldiers down to providence and newport because as soon as you take providence you get the continental army i believe which is like your tech tree and you want to get that unlocked as quickly as possible as you can see we have these soldiers we have currently have four companies of rifles right here or musketmen and this is a fusilier unit right here as well so these are like trained soldiers which is pretty nice they are going to cost us more of these specialists which we'll get on to uh but yeah we want to basically make our way down you can see on the campaign map we have ammunition we have uh, we have provisions which are supplies and our conditioning as well um but yeah we want to make sure we get our way down here as quickly as possible i'm also going to again this is a little bit advanced but i think i'm going to try my best to raise another you know militia here because the more soldiers we have the kind of quicker we can kind of storm and in the early game you want to try if you can try and take all of these regions as quickly as possible also completely forgot as well we actually have a unit of 150 soldiers up here in portsmouth we're not going to be able to hold portsmouth so we're going to basically bring this unit down um and again because we don't have a general there we actually can't see what's happening we can give orders but this unit is going to be going into fog of war and anything could happen we're going to bring it down and hopefully it does make its way down to Leicester and we can take advantage of that. But until then, we're going to have to worry. So let's go and bake up another unit of infantry right here. Now, I don't feel oh, we do actually have cannons as well. Oh, this is really cool as well. So you can actually outfit your guns as well. I like that. Previously, uh, everybody, like all the British soldiers, all the British cannon crew would just have brown besses and they'd be impossible to kill. And you can actually kind of adjust this now as well. Very interesting. Okay, uh, that's nice. So let's make a full unit. We actually have the cannon. We have four of these three pounders. So we're going to do that and we're going to build that up. They're going to slowly replenish from the uh, recruits. Currently, we don't have any recruits at the moment, but as the days go by, you'll see down here in the bottom right-hand corner, as the days go by, uh, you will see that expand and they, they should replenish fairly quickly and hopefully get over here. Because yeah, as I said, I really want to try and make a push for Middlesbrough if we can help it. And here we go, our first proper battle, the Battle of Concord in Lexington. I'm going to basically speed run this battle. You guys have seen it probably a billion times. Always recommend fighting this battle. It's a pretty easy one to win. You just have to fight like, basically a fighting retreat until reinforcements arrive and then you can overrun the British line. Um, and again, it shouldn't be too difficult. Basically, anybody can win it. But it's very important you fight it because you get a ton of very, very good bonuses. So, yeah, I'm just going to set up. Basically, you want to basically just like hold the trees and then like fall back as a British charge you. Try and split their forces up uh, until you inevitably get messed up. And again, if you've never seen these battles before, they're pretty kind of basic. The, the, the unit sizes are much smaller than, say, Civil War because, of course, you know, the, 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 even these battles are very embellished numbers wise to kind of make for a better game. Like in most like uh, revolutionary battles, like 130 men was considered like a big battle masters one unit in this game but again yeah if you want any tips for this battle just kind of split your soldiers up the british will kind of push down at you stay in the trees for good cover you can also press uh this button as well which will give you even more cover you can see if you hold it's going to make them a bit more stationary but it gives you 15 percent extra cover which will help you kind of just survive the british onslaught as i said i really want to try and split the british up until uh until they get closer and closer because again they're going to be very aggressive here and you're going to be hard pressed to win it and of course you're not going to beat the british in like any any proper engagement whatsoever they're gonna be coming in pretty uh full force and you kind of just have to take it like you have to accept your casualties as you can see that volley i'm in like amazing cover and they picked off what like six seven dudes with their brown besses they just have superior training they have superior men superior willpower and until you can kind of until like the first couple years of the war you're gonna be really like hard pressed to actually uh do anything against it but yeah that's part of the game right you're, you're fighting on this back foot of just trying to slow the british off as much as possible i always recommend as well 
whenever you see kind of this charging symbol, you always go and just click this uh, this fullback position. You're going to probably take a little bit more damage as you fall back because the British are going to then fire you in your back. But if you get charged by the British line, they're going to slaughter you. Again, you take casualties falling back if the British can get a volley off. Luckily, we're a little bit okay there. And you can just kind of turn and engage them. But yeah, as you can see, like we're just here to slow up the British as much as possible whilst everybody else gets in position using these smaller units to uh to yeah to pin down pin them down and then I'll hopefully set up a, a nice defense right there again more infantry coming over one thing to keep in mind as well and this is a really good tip with the civilian muskets is actually they're, they're not that bad at close range again the brown besses are way going to be beat you at every single range but the shorter distances you can actually fire with your soldiers the better more damage they're actually going to do you can see the efficiency really does draw off as you get further and further along the uh the range but as the british do get closer again we need to be careful here but like it's actually not a bad idea to, to fire some volleys here and you know getting some good flanking shots like every bit of damage we do here is going to be useful so i'm going to get this volley off and then i'm going to fall back look, look at that like we killed like 20 of them now get the hell out of there please before the british charge us but again as the british get closer and closer um you can really effectively actually kind of like do some decent damage to them um and it's definitely i mean we need to make sure we turn here so we don't get shot in the side that's good we're currently hitting this unit in the back like you can go toe to toe with the british if you just kind of micromanage and you kind of take your shots effectively now let's fall back they're currently getting flanked right now you know we're not doing a bad job and every every unit we kind of take down and we gang up on like this is going to be really effective again we're just trying to slow the british up as much as possible okay we turned i think just in time there can we get a volley off again like we're, again oh we're about to get charged there let's fall back there uh, we have a unit here as well which fell back more british reinforcements that's fine let's get these guys set up like so um okay full back there again and that should bring them into range oh we almost got charged there i was a little bit lucky by us we need to be much careful um but yeah much much better there we're gonna get yeah we got rear flank there which was bad of us but i'm gonna fall back now with this unit hopefully let this unit take over just need to get out of the way and that should be much better yeah we're already hitting these guys you guys are set up pretty decently yeah, get out of their way. I and mean, we should have a lot of guns focused down. We should be able to break that unit pretty effectively as more reinforcements now start to turn up. And look at that. We actually managed to outshoot a British company. Like, that's not bad right there. That was just using tactics. Again, we managed to isolate a lot of the British companies are busy up here getting kind of run over by just kind of like being spread up. And they managed to deal, deal with a lot of my skirmisher units. But that's basically ideally what they're there for so these boys can turn up and we can actually have some decent firepower get them in the forest as quickly as possible ideally if these guys can hold this forest then i can get some more reinforcements there that would not be banned we'll use this forest to our advantage try and draw them into this bit of a, a killing line if we can yeah it's gonna be hard to do so but and we just have some decent reserve lines uh, and yeah just try and try our best to actually actually just kind of hold the british in place would not be a bad idea and kind of just use these units to outflank them uh, and do other things yeah and just utilizing this kind of cross arc right now where we can fire in the back of them is great we've got them turning facing against shooting these uh these skirmishers and i've actually got my proper units again if we were if we were feeling risky we could try and get a little bit closer as well um and just try and get in that's going to bring us more into range of their other units as well but it's going to allow us to get more kills so again we're going to push up a little bit bring these guys in just to support them again staying that forest is going to be crucial we're gonna get a little bit closer so our guns are just a bit more effective and that might force the british to, to turn we've got a good flanking shot off though and we have our first proper unit of uh of, of, of militia right here turning up 250 it's just a lot of guns uh, and again that really does help out look at this this one unit in the forest has been keeping this entire british company busy and you can't complain there as so she managed to rout i think a unit of their supplies as well not that the supplies really matter at this point but and you can see we're just putting in a lot of fire right here on this again focus fire boom there's another british company it's gonna come back but it's gonna be lower morale and it's gonna be much weaker which i'm i'm happy with and there we have it the big bulk of the uh the, the continental army has now shown up so now it's just basically cleaning up these guys getting some envelopments on getting some flanks and then we should basically win the day thing as well to keep in mind is as the british do approach you want to try and get as many shots off on them as possible like if i can get, i can't really get another unit here but as they do approach i ideally want to just fire into this as much as i can uh, of course we need to be careful not to get overrun but reducing them around like melee combat is not your friend in this game especially against the british so if you can get any good shots off and again the british do also struggle from this as well so if you can get your shots off into them and you start rear flanking them their charge is going to be way less effective so it's just something to keep in mind 
Uh, again, trying to get like trying to focus fire if you see a unit coming closer towards you or, or doing anything. Yeah, it's going to be a big, big help. So right now, I've managed to basically engage this unit of British soldiers here. We're, we're hammering them. Um, we actually managed to capture them as well. Unfortunately, in this battle, that doesn't matter. If you capture them properly, it's going to really, really matter. And the British are closing the distance, trying to use their superior morale, but kind of does help us when we have the number advantage. A lot of the time in the campaign, you're not going to have the number advantage. But yeah, this is like this is going to really benefit us. We have good cover, and the British are kind of just coming at us. Whereas fighting us at range, they're always going to end up winning. Um, but we can start to use these numbers to our advantage. You can see just using them in this battle is basically like a, a free gimme. Uh, we'll obviously set up our forces there as well. Uh, you guys can push up. And yeah, there you go. It's going to basically be GGG. We might end up losing a little bit on this flank, but... We have plenty of reinforcements now. It's only a matter of time until that all goes down. We'll reinforce this section if we can and keep these prisons a bit further back as well. And there you go, boom. We managed to hold off the timer here again. The, the British army is basically in tatters now. That cannon is still going to be a pain for sure. They've actually made it so that cannon takes way more damage than musket fire now. So you can actually shoot it to death even though... I mean, look how much damage this... Yeah, that canister shot is insane still. But again, I imagine it would be historically. So that is fair enough. Uh, but yeah, the British cannon is still going to be super scary, but that does also mean that your cannon is going to be super scary as well. And we don't need to finish this one off. Again, none of these casualties actually matter because it's more of a historical battle. But one, as I recommend you fighting, that'll give you a good grip. And it's basically like a free battle for the Americans, whether you win by time or you end up just annihilating the British army like I did. And then boom, there you go. If you win a victory, you gain yourself 10 reputation. Reputation is really important. It allows you to rush tech and tech is going to be what wins you the game. And I believe it also starts giving you extra soldiers as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so let's grab that. This unit needs one more day to be fully replenished. And we'll bring them down to Newport as quickly as possible. Uh, and then we're going to push in here and try and take on the British. Again, keep in mind we actually have no cannon. That should be fine. Also, can we see what these guys are equipped with right now? I'm not sure if we can. They're just, yeah, they're just equipped with civilian muskets, I believe. Everybody, yeah. Okay. And we're going to keep it that way for a little bit. Um, so, boom. If we wanted to, we could just fight this battle uh, and jump in. And it will basically dictate to so the battlefield. I'll do it just to show you guys. I think the British are pretty close to routing in this battle. But we'll dive in anyway. Try and minimize casualties a bit. But basically, how it works when you jump in to the battle is wherever your soldiers are positioned is where they're going to be positioned actually in the battle. Which I think is really cool, right? So if you have a unit behind them, that unit's going to come in behind them. Uh, and it's going to create a very kind of unique style of gameplay. As you can see as well, they have also added in deployment zones for companies and regiments. So depending on the regiment, you actually have to deploy your soldiers again, di like dictated to where they are on the campaign map. So again, you can actually kind of create a bit more strategy, set up your defensive lines early, which again, I think is really, really nice. Because previously it was a bit more messy, whereas now... Uh, you can actually set your soldiers up properly. Um, so we're going to set ourselves up here. Again, we are going uphill, but I imagine British are going to basically just route as soon as they see us. We can also see the vision as well if we wanted to. So again, this is what people can see. Uh, again, I've never found that this really matters too much, honestly. Um, so it's not really a, a, a key I, I press too much either. Um, but yeah, if you want to, you can press that to kind of get to see if you're wonder if you're wondering why a unit isn't shooting or why a cannon isn't firing. Unfortunately, both the British are going to probably just run away as soon as as soon as we get in involved in this. We always get a couple volleys off, and the British are just going to fall back because they're so heavily outnumbered. Yeah, boom, there you go. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to actually charge them down. We might be. We might be able to actually get them here. Uh, and make them surrender. I think we are at least one unit. I'll take that. Yeah, boom. Okay, cool. And can you guys route them? I mean, this is really good, right? Because every British unit you capture is going to be great. It's going to give us more prisoners that we can use in events. And we're, yeah, nice. Cool. I'll take that. We did lose a, a handful of men, but that's fine. Um, and this should actually wipe the British army out off the map as well because we surround made both of them surrender. I think they are just going to give up and it's going to give us more battle loot. Also, importantly, it's going to make sure that there's going to be less British here. British don't recruit soldiers like we do. The British recruit soldiers by shipping them across. So they actually have a finite amount of men. So whenever we kill one of them, that's going to basically mean that there's that's going to be one less British unit to worry about, which is obviously huge, right? The less soldiers they have here, even if it's by 250 men, that's still 250 less superior soldiers that we have to worry about, uh, which is really nice. So what we're going to do is, yeah, we're going to set up here. And I am tempted to rush Middlesbrough, take Providence, leave Newport for now, and just go straight to Middlesbrough. I think I might be the play, honestly. I mean, we'll come back and take Newport a little bit later. Uh, this unit can then start making its way down. Granted, we're not going to have cannon. Uh, what do we get? We've got some more brown besses, I believe, which is fine. So let's take this. Oh, also as well, Washington did level up, which is nice. So we could give him more willpower, which is just more morale, or melee, or better, better shooting. I think we're going to go willpower. I want my men to stand. 
when they're in his range. That's basically everybody in his range is going to just be that much more effective. Um, and I think that's great, right? Boosts morale regeneration, increased command radius. I think that's going to be useful uh, than just making my men better in general. So Providence is going to be taken now, which is good. That's going to be our first mission as well. And the question is, do we want to replenish? We outnumber the British. They have 700 men here. So it's going to be a full British regiment. Can we take that with what we have, though? That is the question. I don't know. This unit can start moving. With the cannon, it should be fine. Oh, I'm, I'm tempted, you know. I'm tempted to wait. Has this unit come down yet? So this unit is still making its way down, which is fine. Um, that's going to make its way down. I'm, I'm very tempted. I think we have to join Garrison for now. And just get in the Garrison. Maybe take our, our replenishment. Can we stick cannon here as well? We can't. Okay. I wasn't sure if we could put, you know, cannon in there. I just don't know if we win that. We outnumber them. They have brown besties, but it's only one regiment, so they'll probably have a cannon in there as well. A cannon's going to be scary, of course. Mm, this is very tempted to push. Do we make this? Do we make this ballsy move early on? If they counterattack from Boston, we're going to get wrecked. I think. I think we don't. I think we. I think we wait until these guys arrive, and then maybe we do. Speaking of which, though, we could probably actually recruit another. Oh no, we don't have a cannon, and our guns are looking a bit, a little bit low as well. Yeah, we managed to get 48 muskets from that, uh, which is good. Every brown best we get is going to be really nice. And as I said, yeah, and they're already reinforcing with cavalry. We'd have been hit hard if we if we went in there. So that's fine. That's fine. You guys get into into Leicester. We're going to give up Portsmouth, but we ain't going to hold Portsmouth when the British forces are uh, you're kind of focused up there. And there we go. The commander in chief of the Continental Army. We gain ourselves an extra unit of uh, soldiers from the Boston region, which is nice. Again, so when these soldiers take casualties, it's going to affect. Uh, depending on what region they're in is going to affect the loyalty of that state so again if these boston soldiers get completely wiped out the the loyalty in the boston area is going to get take a hit because of that and that's something you're going to have to manage um we also get now our technology tree which is gay, uh, great and then we also gain another thousand civilian muskets which is awesome we also gain an extra uh, mass our next mission to take provenance, which we're doing right now. And also the game wants us to research a project. So this is really important. Really important. This is all your tech tree. Oh, you can also get Morgan's rifles right away. That's amazing, actually. Um, but basically, you're going to want to unlock these as quickly as possible because the sooner you unlock these, the sooner you're going to be able to start researching your other tech trees. There's an individual tech tree for every single one of these. So all six of these have their unique tech trees. The sooner you start them, of course, the better it is. So we're going to rush this. When it's at 10 days, you can actually spend some reputation, which you can see up here in the top left, and you can rush it to make it basically fire the next day uh, to skip some, stick, skip some tech days, which is really nice. We're also going to do this one. I'm going to fight this one off camera just to make sure that we can finish off the British right away. Um, and then, then maybe, yeah, then maybe we bring over, we had an extra unit right away up here. Yeah, maybe we bring this unit down and we, uh, we maybe go for Middlesbrough with all of this. Yeah, a pretty nice, again, a pretty clean victory. The most important thing about these battles, though, these small ones, again, the battles are going to be much scarier, much bigger, much quicker than we would like. But taking these early ones out, it's, it's like what, an extra 50 brown besses. That's 10% sort of, of our stockpile right now. We take Newport, we get some good experience for our soldiers, and then we're just, yeah, ready to go. I think we're going to mount a quick attack on Middlesbrough as quickly as possible. We just need these guys down here. And we could quite easily build these guys up as well. We have the civilian muskets now. Unfortunately, we don't have the cannon right now, but that, that's fine. Um, so I think what we do is we just, yeah, we just build up a, a big portion of these guys. It's going to take a little bit longer to bring these guys up to uh, to full power, but that, that's fine. Um, and yeah, let's let's make sure we take Newport quickly. I'm going to start shifting a bunch of probably burns is up here as well. Uh, and then, yeah, I think I want to try and just push in. We take Middlesbrough quickly before, before, before the British get any reinforcements. Um, again, they'll have a lot in Boston. Yeah, 4,000 men in Boston. So we want to try and take it before they can send reinforcements. We're also going to be getting a reinforcement very soon as well. Uh, most likely from Britain being shipped over. So we want to hit them quickly. One of the great things as well is that one of our actual proper Fusilier units have actually just been upgraded. Nice, we gained 10 more prestige from uh, taking that and doing the missions. So now we can actually start to dictate what we want these guys to be. Whether we want them to be more focusing on melee firearms or of course marksmen just being really accurate i think we just go firearms course it gives them better shooting skill gives them more efficiency so it's going to be better with their shots and just makes them shoot faster if we can shoot you know three shots a minute as sharp would always say then we're going to be in a good situation 
Marksman is going to be fine, just making him a little bit better, but the spotting is just kind of a useless, not useless stat. It's better on, obviously, skirmishing units, but like Morgan's rifles would really benefit from this one. But I think just making these guys bog standard, as I mentioned, we're going to end up giving them brown besses uh, at some point. So that's all going to be very useful. Nice. We have our new chief engineer slot right now. We're going to immediately start working on the quartermaster, I believe. That's what we want to do next. And again, just rush it right away. Uh, and then we have a decision to make here. So a really good tip and one thing you're going to want to do pretty early on in your game as we get these guys basically fully ranked up now as well uh, which is nice is that you're going to have basically uh, in your unit you're going to have these backer officers right here which is by people who basically uh, bought into the premium edition and they're going to have this purple background right here and this is going to be someone who bought the premium edition and created their own custom officer which is really cool these guys generally do have the better stats in the game to make them just kind of stand out a little bit more. So one thing you're going to want to try and do is make sure you assign them to this. So right now we need the top and the bottom. The better we have there, the better stats they're going to be and the better, um, better commander we're going to have. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't have great stats in these ones. So normally you'd maybe want to maybe switch him out and change him to someone else and then kind of give him over and we have no one else. Oh, we have another one right here. Again, he's more of a central person. So we don't really need to worry too much about that. What about this guy? Again, not really anything too special, but it's good to take a look at this because you can easily switch someone out if they're like really good and then be like, okay, no, we're going to switch them out and play them with someone else and then put the, the better person in this position. At the moment, Bo Richardson is actually not that bad. And we'll do that. And here we go. We have the uh, engineering tree and this is where we're going to be gaining all of our new muskets, uh, our new rifles and artillery, I think maybe. Uh, no, actually, there's no artillery in this tree. Okay, cool. That's fine with me. Basically, we're going to start working our way down slowly, but surely down to the US muskets and the Virginia 76s. This is going to basically allow us to start producing proper muskets, proper weaponry, and it also allows us to start using factories to produce goods of our own. So I'm going to basically buy some offshore uh, factories, basically renting them from like the British or not the British, obviously, from the Spanish or the French. And that's going to allow us to start producing with our own resources, some of our own muskets. And we're going to want to just basically stick a factory on civilian muskets, start getting that going. As we progress on, though, we can build ships, of course. We can end up building uh, better stuff like factories. Can we do that yet? Uh, yeah, we can. We can actually start building proper stuff. Like right here, you can build factories of your own. You can build more infrastructure for the winter when you need agriculture. You can build more mining for more resources, better logistics so you can get your supplies around faster, or just more military buildings. I think the game is going to want us to build a production factory in, in Hartford. So we're going to start that right away. That's going to take some money, and it's also going to take some of our material costs, which is right here. Uh, we're going to start working on that. I believe as well, yeah, we now get access to these four buildings. We're going to want to try, probably try and build a carpenter house as, as, as quickly as possible, and then make it into a schoolhouse later on uh, as well. The sooner we build this, it starts producing materials, which is what you need for basically every building. You can see this costs five, this costs eight, this costs five. So the sooner we build this, the sooner we're going to be getting that. And ideally, you want to build that in, in most places. And you can see, though, because this place has less population, it's going to take much longer to build these. I'm going to probably build like one. And then again, this takes 30 days again. Boom. I'm going to build it in every single region here. It's going to take some of our money. And ideally, we could even just build it in, in Leicester. A little bit scarier about building it in Leicester just because Leicester's a bit more likely to be taken, whereas we shouldn't really lose this. Now, however, however, we can take these guys, and I think we just push on, on Middlesbrough. Um, ideally, we'll be able to take it before the British can reinforce, and uh, what we can do is we can join these guys into a brigade as well, and we just, we just push on them. We just push on them right away. Jonah Ark has now been... Uh, pushing commander there we push on and we just try and we just try and take Middlesbrough before the British can really react and we have this unit to reinforce Providence if we need to but ideally we want to try and take the British out and ideally we want to try and cut their retreat off to uh to Boston we need to keep a close eye on Boston because I think the British are going to come in and try and take it oh and ideally yeah idea ah, because ideally we want to try and cut off their retreat but I just don't think we're going to and we our conditioning isn't amazing and our morale isn't great but this will allow us to take Middlesbrough from the British pretty early on. Generally, as soon as they get their first sea invasion coming in, which I think happens very soon, the British are going to be able to reinforce this very quickly uh, and stop us. But for now, I think we're okay. I know the British are also going to be getting reinforced. Oh, the British are actually going to retreat from this. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, the British do not want to fight this. I mean, we do have none of them two to one. Okay, this is interesting. So basically, what we're going to have to do, they're going to retreat probably pretty early on in this battle. So what we want to try and do is lure them in. Lure the British in, 
they're unsure at the moment that morale is gonna they're gonna probably stand for a couple volleys and then realize how outnumbered they are and fall back so we need to take advantage of this again you're gonna be fighting in the early game you're gonna want to be trying to take advantage of every, every everything you can so what we want to probably do is stick as many soldiers can we actually only oh, can't go out yeah probably want to stick as many soldiers out here as possible hide them in the forest and then envelop them so as the british come in and as they look to engage us we then basically just wrap up their flank we'll also stick the cannon like right here with some infantry in support uh something like that probably and then yeah we'll use all of these guys to basically get in this forest and uh and envelop them so as the british come into the central part we'll be firing them of course uh right here uh, and we'll be engaging them and hopefully we'll be able to get a nice little envelopment off on them and that will basically just, yeah, we'll be able to wipe them out. But we can kill the cavalry early as well. That's great because the cavalry is a little bit later on for us to get. Uh, so the sooner we kill that, the better. But yeah, we want to basically hold these guys in the forest. No shooting. We need to be a little bit careful though because they do have also, of course, have cavalry as well. Which might jump out at us. Um, but yeah, let's just set these guys up like so. And as we mentioned, um, yeah, and get these guys maybe even round there. Oh no, they found us. Okay, okay, let's fall back, let's fall back. Okay. The British weren't as stupid as I was maybe uh, hoping they would be. Oh, that's fine, Bo. Okay, it seems like they actually have a lot of soldiers on this flank. So let's keep on pulling back to the forest. I'm going to probably initiate my cannon over here. As the cannon should have a good firing position here. Was well, actually really bad because I think the hill. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know why this is also misty as well. Let's just try and get the cannon like here maybe. Very careful of that. Uh, we know there's British soldiers around. So what I might do... Oh, there's a cavalry as well, though. Yeah, we don't want to get isolated. I want to keep on falling back. I, I don't want to really try and shoot into them if I can help it. As the cavalry gets closer, we'll be able to hit it from two. Yeah, this will be really good. This unit's hidden right now. So it's going to basically pop out and get a good volley off there. Reducing the cavalry numbers very effectively. And as I mentioned, we want to basically just try and avoid them. I'm going to be a bit more aggressive on this flank, I think. Because we've seen two of the cavalry on this left flank. So I should be okay. We'll set the cannon up there. Oh, these are all Dragoons as well. So they're actually going to try and uh, firefight me, which is fine. And yeah, we've seen there's a unit off on this flank. So let's go and surround that. Three units should be enough to deal with that. Center's going to be a little bit worrying, I think. Can we, uh, can we fire in on that? And we have two units here. Let's get this unit around the flank. Again, we are in the forest, so we should be in a good situation. And now let's start pushing up a little bit more. As I said, the British going to be probably decently aggressive here. Um, trying to be... Oh, my God, Cannon Bear. <gasps> get the head out of there. Uh, do we rush after the cannon? Because getting some six pounders as battle loot would be really nice, honestly. Okay, we've got this unit surrounded, which is nice. The British just don't have the numbers to cover everything, which is why we're going to be taking advantage of. Um, and I think we have to turn the cannon here. They are really focusing in on this cannon. Okay, yeah, you guys engage. You guys move around the flank. You reinforce that. And then you move around the flank there. I'm going to send this unit back, probably, to try and maybe start shooting that cannon. Our own cannon has now changed to fire on this. The British are falling back. Okay, I think we've got... Okay, cavalry, cavalry, cavalry. Um, yeah, be careful. We don't want to be, we want to be basically stationary whenever we take on that cavalry. You push up there. You guys move up. Uh, and again, we just need to keep on firing. Luckily, these are two of our better units, so we should be okay here. We've got a flanking unit there as well. We have enveloped this unit as well. Good job. And we are getting them to turn a little bit. That should help us out from this unit firing in. You guys go and take deep cover. But you'll see the British are going to put up a decent fight here. This is just one regiment of British infantry and they're, they're not gonna go down without a fight uh they're really not let's make sure we push in here as well that cavalry is moving around We've got some good canister shot off here though you can see just how much damage canister shot does do is really useful what are you guys doing you guys get around the side there uh hit the cavalry oh that's a good flanking shot they are gonna charge me though let's give a general over here asap yeah that's what's gonna be scary is these these british charges we're getting very close here and we do just we do just need to firing because that cavalry will, will rout us and there's gonna be little we can do about it uh we just need to fire it and just try and whittle it down you guys fire in there we'll have a cannon keep on firing we route that unit of british uh which is nice you guys charge if you guys can and we'll bring you guys back uh you're getting some good shots off but full back i don't want to be in canister shot range of that uh at all okay good enough musket fire has basically managed to make this cavalry route uh, if we can capture it that'd be great we didn't obviously lose a, a pretty valuable unit right there a lot of men did go down there but that's fine you guys get on on that flank now you guys can focus that down all right cool this cavalry seemingly has glitched out a little bit i don't know what that's doing but i'm gonna be taking that uh you guys reform you guys are falling back and we're gonna, we're gonna need to deal with this cannon 
And there you go. But the fact that the British were close to routing, we've definitely taken their pound of flesh here. Used ammunition, which we don't really have a lot of, and they do. They've used, yeah, they've done a great job here. Let's continue to surround this. I might charge this unit in a second. Are they charging me? Get a volley off. Because, yeah, these, these are dragoons, I believe. Uh, so they're going to be more of a skirmisher cavalry than a melee cavalry. But you can already start to see the damage that they can do. Let's push up. Uh, let's push up there. As I said, we want to make sure if we can, we want to try and route this. So let's let you guys kind of set that up. You guys have decent conditioning. I'm going to basically just get you guys to charge in. Yeah, that's scary right there. But I think we need to start being a bit more aggressive and try and end this. Uh, that unit of cavalry there is going to be bad. Let's try and turn. Have they turned? Okay. Charge? Oh, they're, they're routing. Okay, cool. Yeah, they've routed. Again, they're going to probably come back from routing. Rally up. Our cannons, again, our cannons just not in a good position here at all. I think I can really even see them, so... But not really much we can do. And I think we just need to maybe push in here, try and route that cannon. If I can capture that cannon, we're very happy. Very, very happy. And then you guys set up there. You guys going to capture that? You might. Oh, this is going to be good, though. Again, they have brown besses, so they might turn and find me and actually do a, do a number. But they're routing, so we should be okay there. Yeah, boom. Nice. And there you go. That unit breaking. Uh, we're basically going to see them off, which is good. Uh, and we obviously want to make sure we charge down this cannon. Luckily, the cannon's really slow to escape, so generally... You can always do that. We actually capture that unit again. Really useful to capture these. Uh, and then we capture this as well, which is good. Let's bring them back. Uh, we might be able to make the cavalry regiment route. I'm not sure, though. Oh, and yeah, you guys charge that down as well. Perfect. Okay, I think we managed to kill Bell and capture basically the entire British company besides this artillery, which they should maybe just surrender anyway. We lost a cannon, unfortunately, but they also did. And I'm hoping we're going to capture these guns that they have access to. We outnumbered them like... Three to one, so oh, two and a half to one. Uh, and they you know, did decent casualties, but we did also slaughter their cavalry. The cavalry seemed like it was a bit unsure of what it was supposed to be doing in that battle. Again, not complaining because we need every help we can get. And they have nerfed cavalry severely. In the previous patches, cavalry would just dominate the battlefield. Like, trust me, they would absolutely obliterate everything you had. We're going to need to get in here as quickly as possible. Ideally, I would love to make this unit of guns break. I'm not sure if they're going to. Um, but we can see. Oh, they did perfect. Cool, they just surrendered. That's beautiful. That's an entire British, uh, yeah, entire British regiment taken out. We got some more Patriots as well. Hurrah, Patriots. Uh, we got a Quartermaster. They wants me to build production buildings, which we are currently already doing because I'm a pro gamer and I've done this before. Let's get the artillery department immediately. Now, we might actually have a good officer to stick in here. So, We'll start a tech because it's going to probably be a day anyway. And our quartermaster is basically all about just building more supplies, building infrastructure, getting more provisions and army limit to your soldiers. So that's really nice. We'll start off with a research speed, but as you'll be able to see, we'll now be getting a big boost to the amount of men we can actually field. In the early game, this isn't too crazy because you're never going to be able to fill it up. But as you progress on, having more army limits can be very important when you get access to canada and you have to defeat invasions and you get down to new york and florida etc it's going to become pretty important we're also going to rush the artillery department again the sooner you get these unlocked the better it's going to be because they take some time and the sooner you get them the better it's going to be so let's move in now we'll send this unit to go and uh, take this and it doesn't look like the british are coming out of boston which is great news for us that's really useful sometimes they do sometimes they don't you can't really dictate i think that the fact that we have uh, a thousand men in leicester is giving us that advantage oh another big thing as well by getting the quartermaster is we now have access to the market so we can start buying cannon which we're gonna 100 percent do um probably like eight of that's a lot of our money but it's gonna be eight cannon we're just gonna get access to and now what we can do is we can start going boom and then we can start putting cannon in these units this guy has very good stats in these two so does he yeah, oh my god, that's amazing. It's perfect for our quartermaster right there. And you'll see, so this is 67 days right now. If I come over here, uh, I find, was it this guy? No, it was this guy, right? Yeah, it was sure. We'll, we'll switch him over. Boom, again. This unit's going to take a big hit in its, in its stats and stuff, but it's worth it to get this tech. And we're going to come down here, and then it's 67 days. It's now shaved off 10 days from that research. How insanely good is that? Um, yeah, amazing. Uh, really, really good. That guy's, yeah, not great stats. So we're looking for people with good stats in the top and bottom uh, and then so on. And then he's going to get better at that as well. His stats are going to improve and it's going to be really good. So yeah, let's take Middlesbrough. We're going to be able to take Middlesbrough from them pretty effectively, I think, uh, without too many issues. We're going to get some more of this uh, this battle loot as well. Um, yeah, the droppable loot as well, which is going to be really nice. 
I'm going to see how much that gives us uh, momentarily. And uh, again, we'll get so 140 brown besties. And I think that's probably like a six pounder or a four pounder. That's generally what the British have. And again, 32 horses, 32 guns, some provisions. Really nice. This is a very good start to the campaign. Okay, and we have our first British reinforcements. It is just one British regiment, so nothing too scary. But again, a British regiment extra is going to be basically enough to reinforce um, reinforce the soldiers at uh, at uh, Boston. And that's going to hurt, of course. That is going to hurt. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-garrison up here. We've got some soldiers to resupply. We're going to probably get a... Yeah, we have enough for another cannon unit in that militia. We want to basically fit out cannons across the board. And then here we come, we have some stuff to think about. So a few a few kind of ways. Obviously, we're going to have to see where these 720 men come from. They're currently here. You can see on the mini-map. We're going to see where they go. They're probably going to reinforce Boston. Uh, they haven't actually taken Portsmouth yet. I don't know why. Um, they want me to construct infrastructure in Portsmouth. I don't think we're going to hold Portsmouth for much longer. So that's going to fail. And we're currently already doing production infrastructure, right? Right here, we're doing production. That is production, right? Just double-checking. Yeah, production infrastructure. We're already building that. It's going to give us access to a factory, which is going to be nice. Uh, we also now have access to the artillery chief. And we actually have no commanders left. Oh, that's not great. That is not good at all. Uh, I guess we do have a lot of soldiers. Is there any regiments I can get rid of? Uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess you. That's funny. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Let's get rid of you because I'd rather have people researching. And we need someone with two. I mean, we actually have a bunch of good commanders with two people. So let's, let me find that really quickly. Yeah, there you go, Ark. You have now a promotion. I also want to just see how, yeah, we'll stick him in. And that's going to really help out with tech time again 39 days out which is good this is all about the artillery truth is all about how you obviously get artillery you get lots of commanders down here there's four pounders if you want to start producing those i'm not sure i think i'm gonna probably rush a little bit further towards like getting howitzers and mortars and then not really worry too much about the six and twelve pounders because we'll get a decent amount of them from just killing the british and i think going down like the mortar and the howitzer route would be really really cool uh and just be fun something a little bit different even though that gun production is really nice once we start getting the virginias and the u.s muskets uh early on now the question is what do we do here with our army innovation we are now in a situation where we actually have all of our departments for now intelligence and navy will come a little bit later in the game i think we need officers i think we do need officers i'm going to rush that again generally you want to try and avoid taking these like one-off things and focus all your reputation and everything else towards uh, towards like the actual tech that matters because there's some really good stuff down here like this gives you benedict arnold it gives you specialists and it gives you general limit meaning you have two commanders you can lead two campaigns at once that's really big this one gives you access to a bunch of new companies and you know better stats military uh, militia company stats that's amazing uh right whenever you recruit militia that stuff's really really useful and yeah there's some really really good stuff here so you want to generally try and avoid this unless you very much need to but I think getting these early on, and especially because our plan is to try and take Boston very early on, before the British can really react to it, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's uh, let's move in here. Again, we have, yeah, this unit could probably switch over. How many? Yeah, we have a lot of civilian muskets as well, yeah. So yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll recruit as many soldiers as possible. Right now, we only have about 220, we're at 2100. So we're going to need to recruit a lot more soldiers, that is for sure. We're also going to probably bring back one of these guys as well so they can replenish in providence again we want to spread out where we're replenishing from as well uh, as much as we can supply wise unfortunately leicester is currently cut off same with portsmouth so if the british do decide to go and take that it's going to be a bad situation but generally i think our plan of action is is to move up to fort stephens with a, a decent enough force to take it that's going to hopefully cause a bunch of the british leaving boston and they're going to head northwards and hopefully have to garrison portsmouth and try and reclaim fort stephens and then we're going to make a big push on Boston. Um, we might have to go when we have similar men, which is going to be you know, not the easiest battle in the world. But I think that's something we're going to have to try and do. The game also wants me to recruit a recruiting house here, which we can do. Um, we'll do that right away. Game of, game of prestige is just invaluable. It's going to be interesting to see where the British do go with these men. Um, yeah, and Middlesbrough now doesn't actually have any soldiers uh, to replenish these guys. But I think we'll be okay. Oh, but yeah, they're literally just sitting here. Yeah, okay, they have 5,000 men right there, which is fine. How many do they have in Salem? I mean, how many men do they have in... Yeah, so they have 400 in Salem, which is not a lot. And then how many in Fort Stephens? Yeah, only 300 in Fort Stephens. Another 1,800 members. So you can start to see where this game does become a little bit scary. Or we also just got all of our extra stuff. And I probably wasted a day or two right here, which is fine. Um, so let's immediately start here on the Army Innovation 1. More unit provisions, and we also get access to new buildings and new generals as well so i think it actually gives us some more generals as well uh, which is nice 
But you also would have just got a bunch more soldiers, so it's worth uh, checking. But oh my god, this guy sucks. Um, if there's anyone better here, yeah, these guys are not good. But we don't need them to be good. We need them to basically lead the advance. To be fair, though, maybe getting Morgan's rifles is not going to be a bad idea because it's just a good unit right away. Or we can rush it as well. Yeah, I think we do. I think, honestly, we do because, again, if our plan is to take this early, I think grabbing that is going to be important. We're also going to take some of these new bad generals and we're going to start setting them up. Boom, boom, and boom. Um, and then, yeah, you only have three guns. We're going to have to buy another cannon, I think, as well, which is fine, which is fine. We also have a bunch of carbines as well. We could sell them if we need to. I think for now it's fine. How are we looking good-wise as well? We have ammunition. We actually have no ammunition. Yeah, we're going to have to buy some of that. Uh, so expensive. Uh, we can sell our furs because uh, that's not going to be something we're going to use. And I think we're going to keep everything else. Provisions are fine for now. Resource-wise, we're looking okay. Obviously, as we take more land, we're going to get access to more of this. Um, and we do need some of this for our production as well. Right now, I believe what we're producing... Yeah, we're using basically barely anything to produce 10, 10 muskets a day. Just enough to kind of fill in the where, where, we're, where we're missing out on them. But yeah, we do need to buy one more cannon, right? I mean, you should have a six pounder here as well, which again, we could just sell 800. That's a lot of money early on. Uh, let's buy a couple more three pounders. Uh, as we just need cannons to shot, basically. And yeah, we just need to basically amass our forces. Morgan's rifles is going to be nice. It's going to be a very valuable unit for taking Boston. And yeah, we just have to prepare. Obviously, these extra 1,800 men are going to be scary, but there's nothing we can do about it in the early game. Even if we went the naval route, there's no way I'd be able to take down the British guns that they have here um, at all. So we just kind of have to just suck it and, uh, you know, just deal with the consequences for now. But I think that is where we're going to end today's episode. I think a really good start. This is like, if you can try and mirror what I've done, you'll be in a good situation in the game. You've got basically all of your headquarters unlocked, all your tech is going, which is really nice. Um, again, I, I probably wouldn't recommend going for Boston unless you've played a couple times because it is hard. Or maybe on an easier difficulty, you can find a way to get enough men there. But we're going to end up probably fighting a battle against the British where we have similar numbers. And if you're not as, if you haven't played this game as much, you're going to probably struggle a little bit right there. Morgan's rifles have been unlocked though, which is great uh, because, yeah, these guys, I believe, are obviously, yeah, they all have hunting rifles. And these guns are insane. They're going to slaughter. Obviously, we have none to replenish them. So as we take casualties for Battle of Boston, we're going to struggle. And they're all skirmishes as well, which is amazing. We're going to give them uh, the stamina. And then, yeah, this is going to be the perfect unit to give the better stats to. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to see that these guys are just going to be incredible. Like, they're going to be really, really good. And if we can upgrade them and stuff, we'll use them. These guns also have way better range as well, I believe. Yeah, 100 and... is now it's reload. What's their range on these bad boys? Yeah, they have 600 range on them, whereas the civilian muskets have like 300. I think even brown besses... Yeah, they have 500, and even brown besses only have 500. We can basically just outmaneuver the British line, hopefully. Yeah, it's going to be super useful uh, when it comes to the main battle, and we'll have to see. Hopefully, it does hold out, and we're actually okay with it all. But yeah, I don't know. Battle bust in the next episode. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. As I said, I think this is a great start to any campaign. We're going to try and like a little faint maneuver, and we're going to try and hit Fort Stephens, drawing the British garrison out of Boston to stop them, because Fort Stephens is a pretty valuable tool for them, and they want to keep it. And then we're going to try and just pounce on Boston next episode and take it. If you guys enjoyed this though, drop a like, drop a comment. It really does help out massively. It goes such a long way. And it would basically let me know that you guys want to see more of this. If you have any tips or advice as well, let me know. Any questions on the game, feel free to ask me down below. And I'll try and answer them in the next episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.